In the Mario universe, there are countless power-ups throughout the games, ranging from ones that can turn Mario into a boo that can float and phase through walls, to ones that can make Mario smaller than that of a Goomba while simultaneously increasing his jump height. However, there's clearly some power-ups out there that outclass the rest in terms of usefulness or strength. So today, I'm going to be listing the top 10 strongest power-ups from the Mario universe. Disclaimer that things like Cappy, Flood, and Yoshi will not be included on this list. I'm more so focusing on the traditional power-ups here. If anything, I'll make a video about Mario's assisted gear at some point in the future. At number 10, we have the Double Cherry. The Double Cherry is a power-up that was introduced in Super Mario 3D World, specifically World 2-5, Double Cherry Pass. This power-up simply spawns a clone of Mario, Luigi, Peach, or Toad, depending on who you're controlling. It's very similar to the Superstar power-up in the sense that it can not only stack with other Mario power-ups, meaning if you already have a boomerang suit on before collecting a Double Cherry, then the clone that spawns will have the boomerang suit as well. But this also applies to the Hatless Mini Mario form. Collecting a Double Cherry in that form won't allow you to turn into Super Mario. You're allowed to have up to five clones of yourself at a time too, allowing for Mario or whoever to cover more ground to kill more baddies, making this even more effective if you have another power equipped with it. Now, what I just said right there is the reason I don't have this power up higher than 10. On its own, it's not super crazy because at the bare base of it, you're just getting yourself another regular Mario that just has the standard jumping movement. The potential for it with combos is crazy, it just doesn't have enough solo power to be higher. If landing on bosses' heads with multiple clones did more damage, then this would be higher on the list for sure. The number 9 spot goes to a classic, the Fire Flower. One of the original Mario power-ups introduced all the way back in the first Super Mario Bros. game from 1985. This power-up has withstood the test of time for over 30 years, proving to be one of Mario's most useful abilities even in newer games. Although the ability to just suit a couple fireballs at a time seems very basic, there is no denying its destructive capabilities in helping Mario get through levels, but also when it comes to defeating bosses, mainly in the 2D titles. The Fire Flower has been one of the only power-ups that's been able to damage bosses at a range in the more modern 2D Mario titles. Granted, the hits of each individual fireball would do less damage than a traditional jump, but you're technically putting yourself at less of a risk with this method because of how long the range is. This power-up just about one-shots every enemy it hits to, the main notorious counter to it being the Dry Bones, who take no damage from it at all, unfortunately. And being able to still use this power underwater will never not be fun. I, I really do like defying nature. Number 8 the Penguin Suit. Initially, I was having a lot of trouble deciding whether to have this power be above or below the Fire Flower, but after many concrete calculations and some thought, I think Penguin Mario has the ever so slight edge here. The Penguin Suit was introduced in New Super Mario Bros. Wii and gives Mario the ability to throw ice balls, be immune to slippery ice floor physics as if he was walking on normal ground all the time, slide on his stomach indefinitely on icy terrain and a teeny bit on regular terrain, and you can smash through brick blocks during this too, as well as swim swim faster in bodies of water. The ice balls being the most useful since you can kill just about every standard enemy the fire flower can, and that includes dry bones by the way. Obviously the traditional ice flower has access to this specific buff too, but you don't get the immunity to slippery physics or better swimming like you do with the penguin suit. The buff against bosses like the Kooplings isn't as big, but you can at least still destroy their wand blast with the ice balls. It really comes down to how much more useful this power is during levels compared to the fire flower. You can do just so much with it, and it's a shame it hasn't gotten more representation in general because I'd love to see more of this power-up. For number 7, we have the Cape Feather. One of Mario's most iconic power-ups of all time, this simple yet effective power-up was introduced in Super Mario World for the SNES. Obtaining the Cape Feather gives Mario the ability to fly indefinitely, descend slower whenever he jumps, perform a spin attack that can kill enemies, spin jump to break blocks, and if you ram the ground with enough speed while being in permaflight mode, you'll defeat every enemy that's on screen. Only if they're on the same ground he makes contact with, of course, but still. The P-Wing from Super Mario Bros. 3 also retained similar abilities, but was much more rare to come across, usually only obtainable through defeating overworld map enemy spawns or collecting a specific amount of coins in certain levels. Whereas the Cape Feather was one of the most common power-ups in Super Mario World, you know, rightfully so, considering it was the main form of Mario used for the game's marketing. It's pretty solid in boss fights, but nothing too crazy since it doesn't have a ranged projectile to it or anything. The main strength comes from how good this thing is for getting through levels, you know. Most levels in Super Mario World can be beaten by just perma-flying at the top of the skybox until you get to the end, and not having to worry about getting hit by anything other than maybe a Lakitu, and I just absolutely love the sound effect it makes when you fly too. 
Number six is the Lucky Bell, a power-up like the Double Cherry also introduced in Super Mario 3D World. Being the Super Bell's more unknown cousin, this power-up isn't brought up in discussions as much due to its uh, nicheness, I guess, since it can't really be obtained until later in the game. It, it retains all the abilities of the standard cat suit, like being able to wall climb, run faster, perform a claw attack on the ground or in midair, and do a claw dive. The only reason it's on here instead of regular Cat Mario is due to the statue ground pound perk it gives. The original Tanuki suit from Super Mario Bros. 3 had something similar. The ability turns Mario into a statue whenever he ground pounds, and while in this statue form, enemies cannot hurt him. Not only that, but you get coins whenever this action is performed with the Lucky Bell. The higher height you ground pound from, the more coins Mario will get before reaching the ground. From my experience, I don't think there's a limit to how many coins you can get from this method either. Correct me if I'm wrong. Meaning you could farm infinite amount of extra lives with this power before the time for the level runs out. Even though enemies will not hurt you upon standard contact in the statue form, you can't move while you're doing this, and you're not immune to lava or poison if you decide to randomly statue over one of these bodies. Regardless, it's still incredibly versatile power-up that's great against all the bosses you can go against, and works in just about every level in the game, including the bonus worlds. The number five spot goes to the Gold Flower or the Gold Fire Flower. A power-up only exclusive to New Super Mario Bros. 2, this power-up packs a devastating setting punch. The gold flower allows Mario or Luigi to turn gold or silver and fire giant golden or silver fireballs from their hands. These fireballs have a large splash damage effect to them that can destroy both enemies and brick blocks alike with just one shot. For example, you can kill a stack of Goombas while breaking brick blocks all at the same time, earning yourself over 30 coins guaranteed. Destroying things with this power-up will grant you more coins than destroying things in a more standard way, which means it's easier to farm extra lives with this item compared to any other power-up on this list. It's no surprised that this can get you through levels easily, but bosses are an even bigger cakewalk. Just one gold or silver fireball is enough to one-shot both standard Bowser and standard dry Bowser. Though for some reason, it still takes three hits to defeat the Koopalings with this power, similarly to just jumping on them traditionally. I'm not sure why that's a thing. But of course, doing it with this method is safer because of the extra range, and you get over 100 coins guaranteed if you land the fireball three times, meaning an automatic extra life if you don't lose the power-up. Wanted to make sure I mentioned that because you can still take damage in this form, albeit it's hard for that to happen if your movement is good enough, but still possible nonetheless. Mario's not completely invincible here. Number four, the Giga Bell. Now, this might have some recency bias to it, but I feel like I had to include this power-up on the list somewhere. The Giga Bell was introduced in the Bowser's Fury side game that was bundled with the Switch port of Super Mario 3D World. It's a power-up that gives Mario the standard Katsuit abilities, minus the statue ground pound, of course, on top of increasing his size at least 100 times normal so he can compete with Fury Bowser in combat. Though similar to the likes of power-ups like the P-Wing, this power-up can only be used if certain conditions are met. In this case, Mario has to collect a certain amount of cat shines to unlock the shrines where the Giga Bells are kept, with the specific number of shines depending on how many times the player has beat Fury Bowser. Other enemies aren't even a factor when Mario is in this form, if Fury Bowser is the only thing that can stand a chance. By that, I mean Fury Bowser does have the ability to damage Mario, although you still stay large even if he takes away the cat powers. That's what makes this so tricky, because at that point, Mario is technically just Mega Mario after you take damage in the Giga Bell form, but you're in a state of the game where the only things that you can really damage or interact with are things that are equal size to you. Whereas previous iterations of the Mega Mushroom just destroys everything in its path no matter what, a lava or poison or falling into pits of nothingness being its only weakness. Of course there's an argument to be made for this power up to be higher, it just feels like I can't in good conscience give it too much praise with how specific its use is. Number three shall be reserved for the comparison power up I just mentioned, the Mega Mushroom. The Mega Star from Super Paper Mario can also be applied here since they essentially have the same feats. This is the only power up on the list that made its debut in a Mario spinoff game rather than a traditional Mario platformer. That spin-off, of course, being Mario Party 4, one of my personal favorites in the Mario Party series. Using it during your turn would not only increase your size, but allows you to roll dice twice instead of just once, and if you come into contact with any other players after you start moving, they'll lose 10 coins. You can also get extra coins by rolling the same number twice, whereas in the Mario platformers, obtaining a Mega Mushroom allows you to destroy anything in your path for about 15 seconds. This is the only power-up in the game that can destroy both warp pipes and even the goal pole in 2D games. Just simply walking around is enough for this. A ground pounding in both the new Super Mario Bros. games and in 3D World is enough to take out multiple enemies at once without even having to make direct contact. The main drawbacks to this power is how rare it is combined with the set duration you can use it. And unlike a lot of other power-ups from the new Super Mario Bros. games in 3D World, it can't be stored away in the power-ups reserves for later use. It's a one and done no matter what. And of course, lava or poison is still enough to get 
get you killed. For the number two spot, we have the Superstar slash Starman slash Rainbow Star, a power-up that's become one of the big icons for invincibility in a video game. This little yellow guy will always be a fan favorite. Anytime you hear that theme song start to play, you just feel like nothing can stop you. And you're right to feel that way because nothing really can. Ooh. One of the OG Mario power-ups with the Fire Flower introduced in the first Super Mario Bros. game as well, the Superstar allows Mario to either defeat or pass through any enemy that comes into contact with him instantly. Not only that, but he gains increased run speed, jump height, and in some cases, jump distance. Notably with the Rainbow Star from the Super Mario Galaxy games case. What puts this power-up just a bit above the Mega Mushroom is not only do I believe having that increased jumping and speed is generally more valuable for someone like Mario, but getting your hands on Superstars is noticeably easier than getting your hands on Mega Mushrooms. Because unlike Mega Mushrooms, Superstars can actually be held in your item inventory if you're playing the new Super Mario Bros. games. It's literally possible to equip this power-up on Mario before even entering a level. So if you want, the beginning of a level can be a breeze for you. It is another power-up that's only usable for a set time, but you can accomplish just about anything you need to in the set time. And like I mentioned earlier, you can even have the Superstar stacked with another power-up just like the Double Cherry. So in theory, if you wanted to start a level in new Super Mario Bros. Wii with the Propeller Mushroom and Superstar, are, you can. And, and what a deadly combo that is. Number one, the Invincibility Leaf. To be clear, the version of it that turns Mario into White Raccoon Mario. I'll throw in the Invincibility Bell as a quick honorable mention and or tied partner, but it's only usable via Amiibo, so it's a little weird. This power-up was introduced in New Super Mario Bros. 2, and this iteration of the power-up only existing in this game. This power-up can be accessed if Mario dies on a specific level five times, which may sound like it's rare on paper due to the spawn requirements, but you could literally just run off the map five times in a row on purpose to get this power up. If you really wanted to use it that much, the process can just be rinsed and repeat for each new level. This leaf gives Mario permanent invincibility for the level that he uses it in. The P meter for flight charges up quicker, Mario can run on water, and do all the other standard moves of Raccoon Mario like the tail whip or descend slower after jumping by holding the jump button. Of course, bosses will also be one shot just by you running into them, a giant Bowser being the only exception to this because he's in the background during that stage of the fight. You really have it all with this power. Yeah, Lava Poison is still dangerous, but you can just fly over it. You know, because of how fast the P meter charges in this form, you practically have access to infinite flight. You can even just fly at mid-level rather than at the top of the skybox if you wanted to. You know, it's not like bullet bills are going to stop you. This power is so broken, it's even caused controversy amongst Mario fans for it being allowed as an option for the player to use. Uh, totally valid, by the way, because it's essentially a free exit to a stage. In a way, it defeats the whole purpose of getting better at a game naturally through the trial and error process. As much as I love seeing Mario be powerful, hopefully power Power-ups like this will get an overdue retirement in future titles. Let me know what you guys think, though. Are there any other power-ups you think are more deserving to be on this list? You know, let me know in the comments below what you think the most overpowered power-ups in Mario are. Of course, be sure to leave a like down below if you enjoyed this video, and subscribe to Weegeman for more awesome countdowns about Mario, Kirby, Pokemon, and other Nintendo titles.